let us start the second session of the current affairs and current affairs obviously as all of you know as we are reaching closer to examination and here in the beginning i want to give you an advice presently don't assess that or don't think that exam would be postponed because this pandemic situation anything might happen and su suddenly it might come down it might go up it is something out of our control that is why we should prepare now thinking that exam will be organized on 27th june 2020 itself 2021 itself yes then keep in mind that 27th june the date of examination and do the revision maximum possible way and we will also try to finish the classes as soon as possible then today instead of going into a detailed class on each one topic i want to give you an overall idea on the current affairs which you have to take care of and goes different from the previous classes i want to cover today three months current affairs of indian polity international relations and indian economy these three subjects june july august and these three months current affairs i want to cover with you and i want to give you an assignment i will give you an brief introduction on all current affairs topics of indian polity indian economy and international relations for the june july august 2020 today within two hours i will give you a material also on that particular current affairs topics after that i request you all please finish studying these current affairs as a part of your daily assignment and next sunday or next saturday i will take an examination next saturday for all of you i will take an examination on these current affairs which we have discussed today and for which i have given you the notes today that way in a marathon way we have to go by the current affairs otherwise if you are going in a small small easy, easy, slow way at present we might not be able to catch up for the date of 27 june then let me start and some current affairs out of the topics i am discussing today because i club together all the current affairs of the june to august three months then in the next week we will cover the september october november current affairs and other current affairs topics also science and technology and geography ecology and environment today itself i will share with you the notes i will take the class on my topics and other topics the faculties when they have time they will come and take the classes of the other current affairs science and technology faculty and geography faculty ecology and run faculty they will take the classes but i will share with you the notes today itself so that you can prepare yourself also you can in the examination next week examination i will not only include the indian polity current affairs or the economic current affairs and the and the and the international relations current affairs i will include questions from whatever material i am sharing with you today yes let us start indian polity the first current affairs you have to take care i want to give you some brief idea on the current affairs you have to take care attorney general of india you have to take care article 76 and we have discussed in the polity material in detail you refer the material because why attorney general you have to take care in july 20, june 2020 the kk venu gobal was reappointed by president of india as the attorney general of india then it was in current affairs you take care of the special powers of attorney general and attorney general has the power to attend any session of parliament can speak in the session of parliament cannot vote in the session of parliament etc you will be remembering you refer that from the acs material second one and shahakar mitra scheme shahakar mitra scheme it is a scheme for and it is a scheme for promoting innovative ideas of young professionals in india the motto of the scheme is vocal for local that is we should give a space for the local products and local ideas then the scheme has been launched to assist the cooperative institutions the cooperative institutions that is for example lot of people cooperating together and they are starting up a new initiative amul is an example of the cooperative initiative and the people of the anand village in anand district in gujarat they cooperated and they contributed their milk and and established a company that is amul milk and similarly we want to get that way the taking the local ideas and being vocal to local we want to promote the promote the young entrepreneurs and young professionals in india this is a program of 
National Cooperative Development Cooperation Society and Cooperation National Cooperative Development Cooperation and is the body supporting and this scheme Sahakar Mitra scheme. Nagar One scheme from this name itself you can understand what is Nagar One scheme. It is a scheme of the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change for creating urban forestry in the urban cities and on the both sides of the road planting the trees and creating urban forestry in 200 cities in India. That is the aim of Nagar One scheme. Garib Kalyan Rozgar Abhiyan, I'm not repeating today. In the last class I have taken Garib Kalyan Rozgar Abhiyan. It is a scheme of government of India to give the job for the migrant workers, for the migrant workers who return to their place during COVID-19. 10th schedule of the constitution because you can see that total 44 pages I have prepared at least 40 pages I have to take last four pages are the art and culture current affairs anyway and that is why I'm going faster I think this way is okay because if you are going to explain one by one in detail nothing we will be able to finish you get a small idea and prepare yourself and if you want to get some details imagine that on a particular topic you feel to get some details you check in Google, whatever in the material of SCS, it is written there. You check in Google, for example, rule of law index for UPSC, you can type. Then you can get the UPSC based content for the rule of law and everything can get in the Google. But I am giving important content here. Some study material of some coaching centers you might have seen. On a single topic, they will give you three pages. We cannot remember that much. Am I right? It is not possible to remember three pages on a single topic. Then how the question will come that we have to address. And schedule of the constitution. In different states of India, MLAs were disqualified. In Rajasthan, there was an issue of Sachin Pilot and Sachin Pilot revolting against Congress and going out. In Madhya Pradesh, there was an issue of Jodi Raditya Sindhya and 22 MLAs revolting against Congress and going out and joining BJP. Here, the issue of the 10th schedule and disqualification of a person for defection came up in the news. It was added into the constitution by 52nd Amendment Act. That is why question might come. You refer that particular portion from ACS material. Rule of law index. Here, question might come. It is an index. An index ranking the world countries in which country rule of law is implemented effectively this index is prepared question might come sometimes who prepares this index this index is prepared by the world justice project it is an international or ngo then world justice project publishes in the index they did not include india and they have included it developed countries then denmark norway and finland denmark is the first country norway second finland is the third in the index regarding rule of law sometimes when this question comes under that statement might come regarding rule of law for regarding rule of law you refer the class ppt of article 40 then you can understand one nation one ration card i have discussed with you in the last week class in detail Pradhan Mandri, Mudra Yojana, we have studied in the economy class in detail. Am I right? We have discussed in the economy class in detail. Pradhan Mandri, Mudra Yojana, aim is refinancing the entrepreneurs. And we have studied Shishu, Kishore, Tar, Shishu, Tarun, Kishore. Three types of lots are there under the Mudra Yojana. Yes. Next one, inner line for which it might be a question. ILP. Earlier, Till 2019, ILP means that in certain northeastern states, earlier in Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, in Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Mizoram, these three states had the ILP. ILP means to enter those states, we should take the permission of the state authorities. Other states from Kerala, I can come to Assam. I don't need to take the permission of anybody. But inner line permit means that to enter these three states, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, and Mizoram. These three in Nagaland also, there is a city called as Dimapur. For this Dimapur city earlier, ILP was not there. Till 2019, I am talking. In 2019, in 2019, we decided to add Dimapur district of Nagaland and Manipur also into the ILP category. Now to enter Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Mizoram and Manipur, we should take the special permission of the state authority called as inner line permit. 
by taking inner line permit a person can stay in the state for 15 days only should come back no outsider can purchase the property in these states and these are the these are the restrictions of ilp because of dimapur district of nagaland and manipur were added into ilp in 2019 question might come on ilp now going to the history of ilp ILP was first introduced by it was a British system. British introduced in 1873 through a British Act that is the Bengal Eastern Frontier Regulation Act. It was an act of British state with the British Central Legislative Council under Viceroy. In 1873, we have Viceroy. From after 1858, we had the Viceroy. Under Viceroy, the Central Legislative Council was established by Charter Act 1853. Am I right? The Central Legislative Council was established by Charter Act of 1853. Please raise the hands faster and to make the class faster. Yes. Then under, under Viceroy, the Central Legislative Council passed an act in 1873 known as Bengal Eastern Frontier Regulation Act. This was the first time into the tribal states of Northeast India, an ILP inner line permit system was introduced. We still continue even after independence. Citizenship Amendment Act. Obviously, we should must study once again. And all of you, please refer. I have taken the class in the Indian polity in the chapter of citizenship in detail. You refer the ACS class, class PPT, and you will get it. Swayam. What is the meaning of Swayam? Self. It is a scheme of Ministry of Human Resource Development under Government of India or Ministry of Education under Government of India for promoting digit online, sorry, promoting the self-study, self-learning, giving certificate to the people after getting self-education. Then Swayam as the term itself means it is a scheme for the, it is a scheme for promoting the self-education by the people of India. And it is a, it is a it is, a, it is a scheme of Ministry of Human Resource Development. Official Language Act. Basically, it is not an act. It is a bill. See, presently, in India, Hindi and English are the official languages. Recently, in the parliament, there was a private members bill. Hope all of you remember, in the class, we have discussed what is private members bill. And you should remember because the private members bill was recently introduced in the parliament question will come a bill introduced by a member of parliament who is not a minister that is called as private members bill this private members bill demanded to declare all 22 languages in the age schedule as the official language of India. then not only hindi and english the 22 languages of the age schedule should be declared as the as the as as the official language of India that was the demand of the private members bill you have to understand what is private members bill and what is the official language of India yes next one question hour is studied in the class in detail yes question hour we have studied in the class in detail stared question and stared question short notice question everything we have discussed in the class recently there was an issue due to COVID-19 Central Government of India decided to suspend question hour and zero hour also. We have studied the zero hour also. Zero hour is an innovation in Indian Parliament. Then in the last winter session, December 2020 winter session, Government of India decided, Central Government decided to scrap or to remove the question hour from the Parliament to reduce the time. Now the issue comes up that who can decide on suspension of question hour or removal of question hour? Central government can decide, yes. Now, whether asking question in the parliament, what type of right it is? Is it a constitutional right? Yes, the answer is that although constitution has not mentioned, any article of Indian constitution has not mentioned directly that is members of parliament has the right to ask question that is nowhere mentioned. But Article 75 of the Indian Constitution tells that Council of Ministers are collect Council of Ministers is collectively responsible to Lok Sabha. Yes, Council of Ministers. Article 75 tells that Council of Ministers is collectively responsible to Lok Sabha. What is the meaning of that? Collectively responsible to Lok Sabha means that whatever question Lok Sabha asks, Council of Ministers should respond. Answer. Am I right? 
then we can infer from Article 75, that is the collective responsibility of Council of Ministers to Lok Sabha gives a meaning that a member of Lok Sabha has the power to ask question to the Council of Ministers. Yes. Then Article 75 of the Constitution infers the right to ask question. Council, the Article 75's direct content is that Council of Ministers is collectively responsible to Lok Sabha. Article 370, scrapping of Article 370, and, and dividing Jammu and Kashmir into two union territories we have discussed in the class in detail and it was a temporary provision in the constitution of India and that article 370 has been removed and by a declaration of president of India. Interstate council and recently an interstate council has been reconstituted that is why interstate council will also come as a question article 263 we have discussed in the class and we have it is there in the material please refer the material and the ppt of the class for that e log adalats electronic log adalats or online log adalats what is the log adalats see instead of we have discussed the log adalats something related to log adalats when we discuss in the judiciary chapter on alternative dispute resolution mechanism yes hope you remember that and we have discussed that log adalats are established by it is a statutory body established under legal services authorities act 1987 then log adalats means that the people's court instead of going into the district court or high court or supreme court establishing with some repaired judges and other people government of the state or government of the municipality or panchayat establishing some people's court and the people's court is solving small small disputes especially the civil disputes then now the point is that the legal services authorities act was recently recently amended for facilitating electronic log adalats making the video conferencing and us bringing the witness in the video conferencing and making the log adalats in an electronic way that is due to COVID-19 pandemic instead of direct log adalats we wanted to make it electronic log adalats. Foreign Contribution Regulation Amendment Act 2020. Foreign Contribution Regulation Amendment Act 2020 because obviously foreigners they can contribute into certain Indian organizations. Yes? Foreigners can give the contribution. A lot of money is coming for different religious organizations from the foreign countries. Recently, the Foreign Contribution Regulation Amendment Act was passed by the Parliament of India. Then, in this, in this act, candidate who is contesting an election, editor or publisher of a newspaper, judges of any court in India, government servants, and members of any legislative assembly or public servants and basically public servants they are prohibited from taking any foreign contribution that is the content of the foreign contribution regulation amendment act these people political parties a candidate is contesting election cannot accept any foreign contribution and a newspaper editor or a newspaper publisher cannot take any foreign contribution Government servants cannot accept any foreign contribution because all these will lead into some corrupt practices. That is why by amending Foreign Contribution Regulation Act in 2020, we have made that restriction. Mission Karma Yogi, we discussed in the last class regarding Mission Karma Yogi. It is a program for because I wanted to include in a single material. That is why I brought it again. Mission Karma Yogi is to reform the Indian civil service or Indian bureaucracy. Spike Mekke, we have Spice Mekke, we have discussed a it is an NGO in India and supported by Ministry of Youth and Welfare and etc. And for promoting Indian culture, Indian dance forms, Indian music and etc. That is the duty of this and duty duty of this Spike Mekke. It is a it is the full form is that Society for Promotion of Indian Classical Music and Culture among the youths. Gold monetization scheme. See, in India, there are a lot of people who keep gold as a reserve. Yes, am I right? Especially if you come to South India and the state of Kerala, you can see that during the wedding, the father of the girl gives a lot of gold as a gift. And they keep the gold as a gold as a asset, asset only. Because of that, what happens is that because, because of this habit, 
lot of gold is imported into india in india we don't have much mining of the gold only one major gold field is there that is kolar gold field in karnataka other than this we don't have much mining of the gold in india because of that we are dependent on the import of gold from south africa south africa is the largest producer of the gold in the world yes because of that what happens is that when we are importing gold is too precious metal when we are importing too much gold our balance of trade increases our balance of payment increases am i right balance of trade deficit and balance of payment def deficit increases rbi wanted to make a solution for this because unnecessarily our balance of trade deficit and balance of payment deficit increases that is why rbi has declared a gold monetization scheme rbi promotes the it is a scheme which promotes the people who have gold in hand to sell the gold into rbi or to any other organization and monetize it or convert the gold into gold bonds instead of keeping us gold in the home you can purchase the gold to bond what is the aim of gold bonds it is equal to gold only it is the paper only bond paper sovereign gold bonds and you will be getting for that bond value will increase when the gold value increases in the market the value will come down for the bond when the value of the gold decreases then instead of keeping the physical gold convert it into money or into sovereign gold bonds that is the aim of this major aim of gold monetization scheme is to reduce the balance of trade and the balance of payment deficit of india atal innovation mission i trust we have discussed in the previous class it is a and it is an innovative program for the young entrepreneurs to start up their program yuva we have discussed that it is the aim for the for the facilitating or enabling our youths to for the future skills and amrut amrut and hope you remember in a previous class we have discussed jal jeevan mission yes jal jeevan mission means drinking water to every rural household similarly this is without any any amrut is also a program of housing and ministry of housing and urban affairs this program jal jeevan mission was a program for giving pure tap drinking water for the rural people amrut is just in the urban area amrut is that every people every household in the urban area because it is a program of housing and urban affairs jal jeevan mission is a program of the ministry of water resources this is a program of the housing and urban affairs this plans to give the access to a water tap and assured supply of water and sewerage connection that is water will also be the drinking water will also be the and drainage then the waste water drainage will also be provided for each house in the urban area that is the amrut scheme and i hope you got it then water supply and plus the sewerage facility connection will also be the under the amrut scheme it is for the urban india jal jeevan mission is for the rural india then every india all over india we will have the pure drinking water now am i right next one renaming india as bharat all of you know article 1 because of this article 1 might come in the question article 1 tells that india that is bharat is a union of states yes india that is bharat is a union of states and then india that is bharat is a union of states is the article 1 as petition was the in the supreme court of india that is the term india should be removed from article 1 supreme court has asked the opinion of central government of india what is your opinion because india is coming from a greek term indica and it was the name given by the colonial people to india the original name of india is bharat that is why the name bharat should be only there in the constitution india should be removed the plea the supreme court has asked the opinion of the opinion of the central government of india on this matter delimitation in northeast india obviously we don't need to know which states the delimitation was then what is delimitation delimitation means that changing the boundary of the constituencies in a state who will be done that it will be done by a delimitation commission under the election commission of india this delimitation commission has some specific powers that is whatever decision they have taken it is final 
if delimitation commission took a decision imagine i am in dibrugarh at present the dibrugarh constituency's border boundary is this and this is the area of dibrugarh constituency it is final it cannot even be questioned in any court of law that much power is there for the delimitation commission recently a delimitation commission was established for the northeastern states of india was when the delimitation was done for all other states northeastern states were put on pending because of the issue of illegal migrants in the state and the updation of nrc in the state of assam assim portal assim portal it is a web portal or a digital portal of the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship the ministry which is managing that is ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship it is a for assim portal's full form is atmanirbhar skilled employee employer mapping now you can understand that it is a portal which is connecting the employees and employers if you are an employee having a particular skill you can register them if you are an employer you need a specific person you can register them then you will connect between the employee and employer unnat bharat abhiyan is a good skill obviously we have students studying in iits iims and central universities etc after they pass out they have the good talent yes they are highly talented people but they don't know india they don't know what is the need of india that is why many pass out of the iits iims they prefer to settle down outside india instead of serving india to address this problem government wants to give some internship in villages that is the higher education unnat bharat abhiyan the people who did the higher education in india you think on how to develop india unnat bharat the high level india how we can create it for that purpose and we want to connect as an internship we want to connect this is a program of the ministry of education and the purpose is to aim to link higher education institutions with a set of five villages one iit taking care of five villages in india and the students are pass out students or the students of iit are thinking how to develop this particular village then higher education centers are promoting the economic social betterment of the village communities and their knowledge accelerate vigyan skill and i'm again once again story please cooperate with me i have to go faster today because and otherwise we will not be able to finish as we targeted and i be i want to finish the current affairs as soon as possible to get the video if you want to watch it again and again you can watch the video those who have the slow pace then accelerate vigyan skill and this one this program is a program for promoting scientific research in india and this is a program science and engineering research board of india this program launched by science and engineering research board of india to strengthen scientific research in india aim is that obviously when more scientific research is there is there in india more development will be there then we want to establish careers in research and knowledge based economy and was our our students of science instead of learning science and passing the science graduation let them in innovate something and doing the research in the science next one is kishan rath kish kisan rath kisan means farmer rath means that you might have seen the rath yatra yes rath yatra by understanding the meaning of these terms we can sometimes easily recall what the program is kisan rath rath means that it is some traditional vehicle used by the royal families am i right some traditional vehicles used by the royal people we called as rath and then rath yatra you might have heard of there was a controversial rath yatra of lk adwani and during the ayodhya issue and anyway my point is kisan rath then you can understand that it is a program for facilitating transportation of food grains and perishable items during lockdown then it is a program launched by ministry of agriculture and welfare for helping farmers that is for transporting their goods into the market and selling in the market and especially the perishable items the fruit and vegetables and this was an did the app this is a mobile application where the farmers can register and the traders can register then the connectivity can be made and transportation will be facilitated by the ministry of agriculture and development then almost more than 
five lakh trucks and twenty thousand tractors and were connected each other for the facilitation of the perishable agricultural commodities during lockdown through the Kisan Dreads mobile application. Article 239A of the Constitution. Sometimes you might have heard of the controversy or the fight between Lieutenant Governor of Delhi and the Government of Delhi. Yes, whether Lieutenant Governor has more power or the Government of Delhi has more power. Why that dispute comes? Because of Article 239A4 of the Constitution. It was added by 14th Constitutional Amendment Act into Constitution in 1962. And it is under this article parliament enacted the government of union territories act 1963 according to this article lieutenant governor used his special powers under article 2010 f4 constitution to overturn cabinet decision if delhi cabinet or puducherry cabinet takes a decision lieutenant governor of delhi puducherry which have a union cab state cabinet or the union territory cabinet and Lieutenant Governor of Delhi and Puducherry can overtune, that is, reject the decision taken by a cabinet of Delhi or Puducherry. This power is given under Article 239A, Clause 4. And under this article, Delhi government is bound to follow the orders of the Lieutenant Governor. That is, the issue happens because of the Article 239A of the Constitution. I hope it is clear. It might come in the question because of the recent dispute, dispute between the Delhi government and the Delhi Lieutenant Governor. Next one. Pragyada. Pragyada, it is a set of instructions. Obviously, during COVID-19, everybody turned, turned into, shifted into digital learning. We are also doing the digital learning. For government universities and government institutions, Ministry of Human Resource Development, or otherwise it is known as Ministry of Education at the center, had given a set of guidelines. Guidelines on how to do the digital education effectively. Those guidelines were titled as, named as Pragyada. Pragyada was the name of that guidelines issued by the, issued by the Ministry of Human Resource Development and that was prepared by NCRT. All of us are familiar, a UPSC aspirant must be familiar with the NCRT, National Council for Educational Research and Training. Some guidelines I have given here, you can read it. Smart India Hackathon, and I have, we have already discussed that because in August 1, MHRD and, uh, has launched the Smart India Hackathon program. It is a program for creating the problem solving, digital problem solving mindset in the, among the students. And Next one, and the theme of this year's Smart India Hackathon was that no problem is too big, no idea is too small. So this Darshan scheme we have already discussed. It is a scheme for promoting the promoting the tourism inside India by promoting 15 thematic tourist circuits. Pradhan Mandri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana. I hope you remember, I have discussed with you earlier, Pradhan Mandri, Garib Kalyan, Anna Yojana. It is also a program for giving the free of cost food for the people. 5 kg, 5 kg crops for each individual and 1 kg chana for household was given under the Pradhan Mandri Kalyan, Garib Kalyan, Anna Yojana. Pradhan Mandri Avas Yojana, Pradhan Mandri Avas Yojana Gramin. It is a program for giving house for everybody housing for all in the villages by 2020 and this is the and this is this is the aim of the pradhan mandri avas yojana earlier pradhan mandri avas yojana was known as indira avas yojana in the name of indira gandhi when government new government came they changed it into pradhan mandri avas yojana ministry of rural development is the nodal ministry for this every government scheme what you have to learn is that what is the aim of the scheme what is the ministry implementing that particular scheme? If there is any particular year, by that particular year, the program will achieve the target. You have to remember that particular year also. And aim is to provide Pukka house, that is the, not the Kacha house. The Pukka house means that not the mud and other good house and with the bricks and the bricks and the roof. With basic amenities to all rural families by the end of March 2022. Krishi Mac, we have discussed that it is a program for developing the agricultural education in agricultural universities and by promoting a digital learning. National Council for Transgender Persons, also we have discussed in the previous class. 
and i'm not discussing that because that we have discussed earlier i wanted to combine everything in a single file that is why that came once again and adil bimits vyakti kalyan yojana that also we have discussed it is a employee state insurance corporations program and for giving insurance for all the employees who lost their job during the covid 19 situation demand for six schedule status in arunachal pradesh we discussed that in the six schedule there are schedule 5 and schedule 6 in the six schedule there are tribal administration of certain tribal areas in assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram yes assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram into that there is a recent requirement of arunachal pradesh should also be added that is why the six schedule might come in the examination we have studied in detail in the indian polity class all of you please refer once again whatever whatever we studied in the acs material and the ppt of the class you refer it once again next one national digital health mission digital health mission this was a program declared by prime minister of india in his independence day speech 74th independence day speech in 2020 and prime minister of india declared the national digital health mission what is the aim of national digital health mission see if i have a disease obviously each individual in india will have a health id if i go into a hospital they will ask me my health id whatever diseases i have they will update in that whatever diagnosis is done i visited the hospital with the fever and some other symptoms and what are the diseases diagnosed and the hospitals all hospitals in india will update the data in my health id then the benefit is that if i am going to another hospital after 2 years with other disease by looking into my health id they can easily know the records of my health issues yes because doctors sometimes they reach into conclusion by looking into the past record of the patient hmm? then sometimes i forget i had a disease and in 2015 16 sometimes i might forget but the national digital health mission will have the records then this is the aim of the national digital health mission it has four features are the one health id will be the personal health records will be the digital doctor will be there which doctors i appointed i can i can consult doctors online also and health health facility registry will also be there i can get the idea that where i can get this particular health facility and the better hospital best hospital for the liver and kidney everything i can get there then this is the national health mission it is a program of the national health authority under ministry of health and family welfare to create a national digital health ecosystem that support universal health coverage we want to cover everybody under the health and another thing is that government can easily get the data what are the diseases mostly prevalent in india how to address those diseases anyway it is a feature of a developed society only we can have a data of our health system national recruitment agency i have discussed with you earlier every 6 months exam will be the 3 years validity of the list will be the and they will conduct the examination in almost 1000 points in india etc all these points we have discussed and they will do initially for the railway recruitment board and ssc and etc all those things i feel you remember national mission for financial inclusion this is nothing but what we discussed because jan dhan yojana prime minister jan dhan yojana we discussed giving bank account for everybody is another name of the jan dhan yojana is national mission for financial inclusion why it was in use it completed the 6 years of the program then you can you know everything regarding the prime minister jan dhan yojana we have discussed that in the class and we have included that in the study material and the ppt of our classes also india's longest river ropeway in assam a 1.8 km river ropeway and above the river a ropeway you can use the cable car and move that has been opened in the on the brahmaputra river in assam assam has lot of speciality the longest river bridge in india is buban hazarika sedu or buban hazarika bridge connecting the cities of dhola and sadia in the state of assam the longest river come the road come rail bridge in india is also in assam the bogibil bridge connecting the city of dibrugad with the city of dhamaji or with the arunachal pradesh in with uh, dhamaji is in assam 
and other cities of Arunachal Pradesh like Pasigarh and etc. is also in the state of Assam. Then longest river ropeway is also in the state of Assam. This river ropeway aim is that it is for connecting or for for facilitating the transportation of pilgrims into a temple, Umananda temple. It is a medieval Shiva temple in an island known as Peacock Island. Then the aim of this 1.8 kilometer ropeway is that to carry the believers who want to visit this particular temple. And next one, clause six of Assam Accord. See, Assam Accord, hope you remember, in the citizenship chapter we have discussed. Under the Assam Accord, there was a clause six of the Assam Accord. Why it was important, we mean, why it was important? Recently, Central Government of India established a committee under Biplab Sharma, Biplab Kumar Sharma Committee. Biplab Kumar Sharma is a retired judge of the Guwahati High Court. Under his leadership, recently, Central Government of India established a committee named as Biplab Kumar Sharma Committee. The task given to the Biplav Kumar Sharma committee was that and the task given to Biplav Kumar Sharma committee was to see the way of implementing the clause 6 of Assam Accord. That is where the clause 6 specifically came into the news. The clause 6 and proposed that a definition of the Assamese people will be there. The clause 6 and the Ministry of Home Affairs appointed a committee on implementation of clause 6 of Assam Accord has proposed, the committee has proposed a definition of Assamese people. Then the clause 6 is specifically tells that the culture and literature, language and the, and the language of Assamese culture, Assamese will be protected under the Assam Accord. That is the clause 6. Then how to protect it? Biplav Kumar Sharma committee was recently appointed by, it is mentioned here, Biplav Kumar Sharma committee was recently established by, constituted by government of India. Next one is curative petition. Symbol only. We studied in the class that Supreme Court of India has the power to review its own judgment. Yes, Supreme Court of India has the power to review its own judgment. A petition in Shabari Malakis. And a curative petition has been submitted. Curative petition means that Supreme Court gave a final judgment against submitting a petition asking Supreme Court to review its judgment. You please re-look into your judgment. It was in news, one because of Shabarimala issue. In Shabarimala, a curative petition has been submitted. Nirbhaya case convicts, and they were given the death penalty. They submitted multiple times curative petition before they were hanged. Yes. Let's ask the Supreme Court of India to re-look into the judgment. Two, three, one by one, everybody submitted the curative petition. That is why also curative petition was in use. And next one is that looking into the history of this term and the concept of curative petition was first evolved by Supreme Court of India in the Rupa Ashokura versus Ashokura and another case, 2002. In this case, first time this concept or this review came up. That is why the, the term curative petition was also included in that one. Then you simply need to understand, sometimes question will come, which of the following is the correct explanation of the term curative petition which was in news recently. Simply it is the review petition of a judgment of the Supreme Court. No confidence motion, we have discussed in the class recently in the Parliament of India, opposition presented a no confidence motion against the government. Then a motion which is expressing expressing the confidence of the no confidence of the house in the Lok Sabha in the government. If the no confidence motion is passed, government will have to resign. The no confidence motion has nowhere mentioned in the constitution. Again, the collective responsibility and of the part of the Lok, ministry to Lok Sabha, it comes under Article 75. Again, no confidence motion is also inferred from Article 75 of the Indian Constitution. Next one, three capitals for Andhra Pradesh. Now question might come, who decides that how many capitals should be for a state? What is the procedure for that? It can be decided by the state government. Then Andhra Pradesh, the Republic of South Africa has multiple capitals and Cape Town and what is the other capital, Johannesburg and etc. And then my point is that similarly, 
the andhra wants to go for the three capitals one is legislative capital executive capital and the judicial capital vishakhapatnam is and has the executive capital amaravati will be the legislative capital and the kurnool will be the judicial capital then that is the aim of andhra who can decide it state government can decide it draft defense production and export promotion policy 20 Government has made a policy on defense production and export. What is the policy to be followed in India? Any company which is involved in the production of the defense items, missiles, and other weapons, and military vehicles, tanks, and tankers, etc. Then what is the policy to be followed by the producers and exporters also? whether the defense items can be exported if it is exported can be exported to all the countries or into any specific countries only and all these matters are explained i will give you a detailed note here i have given the summary you can also get in google the detailed terms and conditions because under this question sometimes the question might come which of the following statements are correct regarding the defense production and export promotion policy 2020 i will give you the detailed notes in the Detail detail notes will be provided to you all of you. I have already appointed one person to prepare the detail note on this particular topic. When it is prepared, I will share with you all in the group. Regional connectivity scheme, see, Udan scheme, Udan scheme and U D N. Udan means that fly. This this is a scheme of government of India. Was why it was in news. Recently, Ministry of Civil Aviation approved seventy-eight new routes. Seventy-eight new routes means new destinations under the Udan scheme. That is making the flight facility into the remote cities in India. This is the fourth round of Udan scheme. The full form is Uday Desh Ka Aam Nagrik. That the common people am admi am nagrik of the state and the common citizens of India let them fly. And Ude Desh ka Aam Nagrik Nagrik. Then let the common citizens of India fly. The aim is that fixing the flight ticket price. If a flight journey is less than half an hour, then maximum price can be this much. If the flight journey is one less than one hour, maximum price is this much. That is the aim of the scheme. If flight companies are making any loss. Then government of India will compensate the loss for them, and if they make any loss because of this scheme, that is the scheme under this scheme. You can see that sometimes you can get the very cheap flight ticket for Ladakh. I have seen that from Delhi to Ladakh, and it is a remote area, very cheap flight ticket because Ladakh comes under the Udan scheme. In the northeastern states, also you can find the very cheap flight ticket because it is coming under the Udan scheme. National Population Register. You might it might have been a contro it was a controversy recently. It was in news. Yes, National Population Register, National Register of Citizens (NRC) (CAA). Everything was taken together. What is the difference of this? National Population Register is the register of the usual residents in the country. Listen carefully. The difference. National Population Register is the register of the usual residents in the country. Imagine, I went to South Africa for any job. Imagine so, I went to South Africa for any job. I am working in South Africa. I am a carelite working in South Africa. For last six, seven months or one year, I was in South Africa only. My name will not be there in the NPR. National Population Register, my name will not be there. National Population Register's aim is to find out who are the people permanently residing in India. Then, among the citizens, who are the people permanently residing in India? For the name to be added in NPR, at least last six months you should be staying in India. Otherwise, your name will not be there in NPR. NPR is not a proof of citizenship. NPR is a simple data. We want to understand how many people are residing, citizens are residing in India. How many are working outside? Remaining people can be can be categorized as people working outside India. Then this is prepared under the provisions of Citizenship Act 1955 and the Citizenship Registration of Citizens issue of National Identity Cards Rules 2003. Second one is NRC, National Register of Citizenship. You might have heard of that a new NRC was released for published for the state of Assam. Yes, 
All of you might have heard of that news. A new NRC was published for the state of Assam. NRC basically National Register of Citizenship. In 1950, 26 January 1950, we have given citizenship for lot of the people. Article 5, 6, 7, 8. Yes, people under Article 5, 6, 7, 8, we have given them citizenship in the citizenship in 1950. Their names were registered in a document in 1951. That is called as NRC of India. Your grandfather's or grandfather's father who was living in 1950s and they got Indian citizenship after independence, their name will be there in Indian NRC. Yes. Now, only for the state of Assam, because of large number of illegal migration happened in the state of Assam, it was updated. Every state in India has an NRC. And but only for the state of Assam, the NRC was updated recently. The NRC is the NRC is the document, original document of 1951. It mentions the list, the names of the people who were Indian citizens in 1950. And after that, whoever their children, they will automatically get citizenship by birth or by descent. Then you can prove one way of proving you as a citizen of India at present is that you have to prove that your grandfather in your lineage, the person's name was there in the original NRC of 1951. And that is the present day one proof of citizenship. Somebody in the class sometimes asked me that what is the evidence or proof of citizenship of India at present? This is one. Proof. Then otherwise you have to prove that one of your father, grandfather had a land in India the land document and that person whose name is there in the land document is available in the NRC also. And NRC is the list of all citizens, whether residing in India, outside India. NPR is the document of all, register of all citizens residing in India only. Presently, there is a demand for updation of NRC of Tribura also. Tribura also claims that a lot of illegal migrants are there. Our NRC should also be updated. Pradhan Mandri Kaushal Vigas Yojana. This is a scheme for the skill development of the people of India. Free shortage skill development courses for the people. It is implemented by National Skill Development Corporation under the guidance of Ministry of Skill Development and the Entrepreneurship. Pradhan Mandri Matsya Sambada Yojana. It is a program for development of fishery sector in India. Matsya means fisher, fish only. It is for the fishery development and scheme for fishery development as a part of Atmanurbar Bharat Abhiyan. Self-sufficient India, we want to be self-sufficient in the fishery sector also because in India, lot of fishery productivity is there. Lot, we have the potential to produce the inland fishery and to catch the sea fishery, the marine fishery also, but we are not utilizing that. Production is less than productivity. Productivity means the ability to produce then we have to match the difference or match the gap between the production and productivity of the productivity of the fishery sector. That is one aim of the Pradhan Mandri Matsya Sambandha Yojana. Sambandha Yojana. Beti Bachao, Beti Padao. All of you know that scheme. The aim of the scheme is, the aim of the Beti Bachao, Beti Padao scheme is to increase the, improving the child sex ratio the child sex ratio, because all these schemes were in news in June, July, August 2020. That's why I have taken. It is the aim is to improve the child sex ratio, because especially in the states of Rajasthan, Haryana, where the sex ratio of Punjab, Rajasthan, Haryana, where the sex ratio of children is very low. And this is a program implemented under the Ministry of Women and Child Development, Health and Family Welfare and Human Resource Development. Then, Betty Bachao, Betty Patao scheme. Coming to certain important topics of the international relations. First one is we are discussing is FATF Grey List. Hope you remember in the economic class we had discussed something regarding FATF. Yes, the, the foreign institutional investors class. We discussed that. The, in, the investors, the institutional investors or FII investors in India from the countries which have signed the FATF agreement, they can directly invest without any Indian investor, without any permission from government of India. Then what is this FATF? Financial Action Task Force. It is an international agreement. 
under this international agreement if any country imagine if any country is supporting supporting the terrorism through financial methods that is the country is not taking action a country's government is not taking action on terror funding or money laundering that country will be first will be listed in the gray list of fatf now fatf it is a warning only government of this particular country you take action on the terror funding on the money laundering in your country if the country is not taking action again then the country will be change shifted into blacklist then two lists are the blacklist and the gray list why it was in news because the fatf there was there was a five day session in october 2019 in paris in the five day plenary session of fatf in paris in october 2019 they took a decision to keep pakistan on the gray list then it has again given the warning that if pakistan is not fighting against the black mark black mark, the terrorism funding and the money laundering in their country then they will be added into the black list also presently pakistan has been added into the gray list and it might be the first part you have to understand is that sometimes the question will come the gray list which was recently in news is associated with which international agreement or organization answer is fatf then because because of the pakistan's being added into gray list this term sometimes the gray list and black list which is normally in the news recently has been associated with which international organization or agreement answer is fatf financial action task force then financial action at present they have 37 members of are there in the fatf agreement and india is a part of fatf and if a country is a member of fatf and their member country their members their citizens can invest in indian stock market indian bank account indian bond market and they can invest the money without without going to an indian investor directly they can invest money in india that we discussed in the class asean summit i hope you remember we discussed the asean regarding asean then ASEAN is Association of Southeast Asian Nations. It had the summit recently in Vietnam, and in the summit they invited three or few outside members. China, Japan, and South Korea were invited as the as the invitees in the ASEAN summit. Normally, India was also invited. This time, India was not invited. Then ASEAN ten members are the we have discussed those ten members. Abraham Accord. Hope you remember we discussed the UAE. israel deal yes uae israel deal and that time somebody corrected me also it, the bahrain was also a part of the deal then the deal between israel uae and bahrain is called as abraham accord the name of the deal i forgot to mention on that particular day the name the deal is named as abraham accord and then abraham accord sometimes it will come in the news that abraham accord which was recently in news is what then it is the it is the peace deal between uae and uae and israel plus bahrain that is called as the abraham accord g20 g20 recently the g20 meeting leaders meeting was held in buenos aires in argentina what is g20 it is a 19 countries we have discussed in the economic class in the organization sector <coughs> regarding g20 <coughs> g20 is the organization of 19 countries in the world 19 most performing economies in the world plus european union then 19 countries plus european union is the g20 and g20 and has the 85% of the global gdp 80% of the global investment and 75% of the global trade G20 functions when there is an economic crisis. How to come out of the crisis? G20 was very active during 2008 economic crisis, and presently also became active because of the COVID-19 economic crisis. Shanghai Cooperation Organization, that also we have discussed, and External Affairs Minister of India S J Shankar recently represented India in the SEO Shanghai Cooperation Organization's Foreign Ministers Meeting. then we have discussed in the class the seo shanghai cooperation organization it is the countries eight members are the india kazakhstan china kyrgyzstan 
and Pakistan, the Russian Federation, the Republic of Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. These are the eight members in the SE or Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Hagia Sophia, we discussed, it was the cathedral during the Byzantine Empire in Turkey. It was later converted into a Muslim mosque by Muhammad al Fatih when he conquered Constantinople. Later, the Ataturk and Mustafa Kamal Ataturk, he converted that as a museum. Recently, the Supreme Council of Turkey or the Supreme Court of Turkey has reconverted that as a mosque again. Yes. And next one, new constitution of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan president and Daj Paksa, and he was elected in 2019. And he he addressed the inaugural session, the first session of first address of him after being elected as president of Sri Lanka to the Sri Lankan parliament. He suggested that Sri Lanka will draft a new constitution and abolish the 19th Amendment Act of Sri Lankan Constitution. What is 19th Amendment Act? In the 19th Amendment Act of Sri Lankan, Sri Lankan Constitution, the president of Sri Lanka's powers were reduced and parliament of Sri Lanka was given more power. President's powers were curtailed. After this person came into power, he wanted to reinstate, re-establish the earlier powers of president of Sri Lanka and he wants to demolish the or the redraft the constitution for Sri Lanka and he wants to make the one more thing and in the new constitution, there will be one country, one law for all the people. There is some, some specific features for the Tamil, Tamil minorities in Sri Lanka in the Sri Lankan constitution. It was as per the interference of India, there was 13th Amendment Act of Sri Lankan Constitution. The 13th Amendment, 13, 13th Amendment Act had given certain privileges for the Tamil language and the Tamil people. Now, the Raj Paksa, he wants to make one single law for everybody in Sri Lanka, whether they are Tamilians or the Sinhalese. Sinhalese that is the original people of Sri Lanka. Yes. Bhutan demarches India and See, Bhutan, sorry, demarches China. Demark means that demarking, making a diplomatic protest. Then Bhutan is, Bhutan is informing a diplomatic protest to China. Why, what is the issue? China has recently made a claim over the Sakten Wildlife Sanctuary situated in Eastern Bhutan. China has that habit only. And and China, sometimes they come to the dark and ask some region is ours, Galvan Valley, Penong Lake, and etc. Yes. And this is called as the salami slice approach of China. Salami, and you might have seen the salamis. Yes. Salami is some food item. Yes. Salami slice and small, small slice we make out of that. I hope you are familiar with the salami. You can see in Google, I think, and salami slice. I can. Yeah, and this is the salami slice and the image I can show you. And the sal uh, this is the salami slice. Hmm? Then salami slice policy of, this is also an important term in the news. I think today's itself, today's class itself it comes. Salami slicing means it is a foreign policy of China. And you understood what is physically, what is the meaning of salami slicing? That is cutting that food item into slice. Similarly, what China does is that sometimes climbing something in Bhutan, so claiming something in India, some slice of land they are claiming from one region, adding that to China, adding that to China, and expanding China. This is called as the salami slicing policy of China. Now, my point is that, and this is also a part of the salami slicing policy of the China, claiming one wildlife sanctuary in Bhutan. Question will come for us, Sakteng Wildlife Sanctuary, which was recently in news, is which in which country? Bhutan is the answer. And because it was in news because of the China climate that. Then another one, Bhutan's western and middle sector have been in dispute with China that there are Jakarlung and Slangung and Chumbi Valley. These three valleys and <coughs> three regions of the eastern, mid, western and middle part of the Bhutan also has been a disputed area with the China. Then these terms we have to understand. Sakteng Wildlife Sanctuary in Bhutan and the Jakarlung and the Slamalung and the Chumbi Valley. These three are also in Bhutan because these were in news recently. It might come and 
some sometimes they will ask was in news recently because the answer will be because of the china bhutan dispute on these territories hmm. yes next one india bhutan open new trade route and recently we we have decided to open a trade route between the west bengal's jai gaon with ahle in ahle ahle pasaka in bhutan then these two kind of areas we want to connect by road and land routes that is a road only and by road we want to connect and we want to make a trade route between between india and bhutan one more thing obviously it will be it will be helping the two countries to transport the goods during covid 19 one more thing you have to make sure make not down is that india is the largest trading partner of bhutan that means for bhutan if they calculate their total export and import and their maximum export and import happens with with india and most of the south asian south asian countries have the large have the largest trade partner as china but bhutan is an exception bhutan's largest trade partner is india that also might come in the question because if a statement comes that india is the largest trade partner of bhutan in the question paper you don't think it has a wrong statement it is a correct statement china is not the largest india is the largest trade partner of bhutan world bank support for india to india for msme micro small and medium enterprises recently the world bank and the government of india has signed us dollar 750 million agreement for an emergency response program for micro small and medium enterprises and this emergency response program are dedicated for enhancing resilience of communities and livelihoods that is a community if they don't have livelihood promoting them to start a micro small or medium enterprise and giving them funds and we want to fight the poverty and we want to we want to fight the solve the problems of the people byrus explore explosion there was a big explosion in the city of byrus byrus is the capital city of lebanon why i am giving these statements this current affairs because in the past questions have come this way if a terrorist attack happened in a particular city then they asked four five cities where the terrorist attack happened they have given the city name here country name here and match then byrus might come in the question because there was a heavy blast in which 4000 people injured and more than 100 people died also and this blast it was measured as in the in the this in, in the in, in, in the in this richter scale as 3.3 Richter scale earthquake. Then it created a small earthquake also in in Lebanon, Lebanon in the country Lebanon in the Beirut city. That is why Beirut, the area you have to remember, it is a Middle Eastern country. Lebanon's capital is Beirut. Amnesty International, it is a London-based non-governmental organization founded in 1961 that functions for protection of human rights. Amnesty was in news. for multiple reasons because government of india for highlighting some human rights violation in india government of india made some restrictions on amnesty's works in india one thing another one and amnesty made a made a statement that the protest over the rising fuel prices and subsequent government crackdown have caused many of their lives across iran iran had a fuel price increase people protested then government made the operation many people died in that operation amnesty made a protest against that that is why amnesty was in news and in indian context also amnesty amnesty was in news because of the and because because of the their government restriction on amnesty pakistan's new map pakistan has prepared a new map in their new map and jammu and kashmir is a part of pakistan ladakh is jammu and kashmir we know but the question will come regarding this particular area ladakh all of us know sar creek they have included as a part of pakistan then this geography of this sar creek it is a delta of indus river in the india pakistan border then sometimes it will come in the news sar creek which was in news recently which of the following is the correct explanation of this geography term then sar creek is a indus delta indus river delta on the border of india and pakistan you have to understand that junagadh also they are claiming junagadh we have studied how junagadh was incorporated as a part of india it was by plebiscite or referendum junagadh was incorporated as a part of india then question might come regarding these areas that is the only thing 
otherwise pakistan's map is not important for us but the geographic areas mentioned the might come as a question and again similarly nepal has also created the headache for us nepal passed a new map bill in that map bill nepal has included the pitoragad district of uttarakhand as a part of nepal then this area will also be coming in the news because of the the nepal bill nepal map bill became controversial they have added a part of india that is the pitoragad district of india in uttarakhand as a part of nepal then not only that and india has nepal's claim to three indian areas kalapani and the lipu lake and lakimpria and what is limpi limpia dura in the uttarakhand these three areas nepal had already a claim and india has india has rejected that next one world university ranking world university ranking every year the most of most accepted world university rank every year is published by an publication or a journal or a magazine named as qs qs means that it is cockerelli and simons it is i think some greek or german or french i don't know which language it is anyway and it has given the world university rank in this year 2021 ranking the indian institute of technologies and indian institute of science their rank has gone down that is why it was in news hmm? then question will be and on the qs world bank it is a annual publication of university ranking which comprises global overall subject ranking only three education institutions from india iit bombay got 172 rank iit ias isc bangalore 185 iit delhi 193 we have nothing below rank no indian institute got the rank below 100 and below 200 only we have only three institutions and iit bombay indian institute of science bangalore and iit delhi are the only institutions the rank the rank rank 200 yes h1 b visa it was also in the news and multiple times the h1 b visa has been in news because it is a visa non immigrant visa issued by the engineers or the professionals from outside the country by the american government if an indian engineer going into america to work and that type of visa issued to him is known as h1 b visa and why it was in news because us administration once again amended the h1 b visa norms and many times they increase the fee of h1 b visa to demotivate the foreigners working in america many times they make most of restrictions recently also they made the restrictions rules to give priority to higher wages and skill for selection of deserving candidates everybody will not be given and they will be given giving only the higher wages and highly skilled people only the old lottery system of work visa selection will not be followed now earlier imagine if government decides to give them 1000 visa then if 2000 application comes they will put all the application in a lot and pick up some 1000 those who came by luck they were given the visa now they are decided that they will look into the qualifications of the person expertise of the person and the wage the person might get in the us based on that they will decide the h1b visa now global education monitoring report it is a report of the unesco united nations educational scientific and cultural and, and cultural organization then with social and cultural organization unesco is publishing every year the global education monitoring report and during covid-19 pandemic basically our question will be the and mostly these reports are coming reports published in last one year mostly comes in the question from any one international organization global education monitoring report is published by unesco it has the report on during covid 19 how the education was performing well some little bit i have given the poor people were unable to get into education during covid 19 because they had no money for the for the internet israel palestine conflict and obviously and we remember that israel palestine because palestine was the arab country israel is a jew country israel and occupied the arab land and established the jew country it was recognized by the un in 1940 1947 46 then different wars happened between palestine and israel in 1948 and 1967 then presently bahrain 
US and Bahrain made a peace agreement, wanted to bring a peace between Israel and Palestine. Palestine rejected that because they wanted to at least the Israel should end the ongoing occupation. Part of it, they already occupied and along with that and the ongoing occupation Israel still occupies the two territories only Palestine has at present. One is West Bank, second one is Gaza. These terms also might come in the news. Gaza, West Bank, these are the commonly coming in the news, Middle Eastern region. These are the two provinces of the Palestine. Then Palestine wants that in the agreement, in the peace agreement, there should be a condition that Israel should stop all the ongoing occupation by them. They will never occupy any territory of the West Bank or Gaza in Palestine. That was missing in the agreement because Israel did not agree to that. That is why the Israel-Palestine peace treaty initiated by US and Bahrain was rejected by Palestine. And then Israel-Palestine issue, you can have some idea by reading the material I have given here. And you can read it and you can understand as you can get a small idea on the Israel and Palestine idea. Border issues with China, as I told you again, Galvan Valley, you have to know the geography of that particular Galvan Valley and search in map and find out the Galvan Valley where it is located. Some news might, some question might come on Galvan Valley and Penong Lake and etc. Some questions might come and because of the border issue between India and China. India elected as the United Nations non-permanent member in the Security Council of the UN. Five permanent members are the, we have discussed them and Russia, China, France, US and UK are the five permanent members of the Security Council. They have the veto power. In and other 10 non-permanent members will be there in the Security Council of the US and they don't have the veto power. Recently, India has been selected. And for a two-year term between 2021 and 22, India has been elected as a non-permanent member in the UN Security Council. Regarding UN and the organizations of the UN, we have discussed in detail in the economy material of our class. Russia, India, China summit. And in June 23rd, 2020, Russia, India, China summit. The summit of these three countries was held. The special summit was to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the victory of the China, Russia in the Second World War over Nazism, over the Italy and Germany and the Russia won or the Allied forces won and the formation of the United Nations and United Nations was formed after that to commemorate these two events and to celebrate the Russia's victory 75 years we had a Russia-India-China summit and in that obviously and India's stand is that India decisions to go ahead with the ministerial level exchange. Although we have dispute with China, we wanted to have the ministerial level discussion with the China and Russia. China's stand is that they are ready to participate in the India-China-Russia meeting. China has also agreed to control the situation in the border area. They will not escalate the dispute in the border. Russia indicated that it would support constructive dialogue over the tension in the Eastern Ladakh. Although we were having disputes, India participated in this summit and we reached into an agreement that Russia offered us that they will support us in the China's, China's intrusion into the Ladakh. UN turns 75 because of that. Anyway, you, some question related to UN might come. You study perfectly whatever UN chapter we have given in the economy material. You study thoroughly regarding the formation of the UN after the Second World War because UN has been has finished the 75 years of anniversary. Then in the 75 years, there is something controversial about that. 75 years celebration of the UN, UN has taken a motto, shared vision of a common future shared vision of a common future for a common future for the world we should make a shared vision six countries opposed it six countries means that five countries are the five eyes five eyes means that it's an international organ intelligence organization five eyes i your eye five eyes is an international intelligence organization we have in india raw research and analysis wing it is an intelligence organization of india Pakistan has the ISI and uh, Israel has Mossad. You might have heard of this intelligence organization. India has the RAW and IB, Intelligence Bureau also. 
similarly australia canada new zealand united kingdom and us these five countries they have together made an intelligence organization for all these five countries this is known as the five eyes f v e y five eyes that is a international international intelligence organization this five eyes and india we have opposed the motto of the 75th fifth anniversary of the un that is shared vision of a common future why this is a motto of china then this is a motto of china because it was a motto of the chinese development model then china it was a motto used by china then by imitating the chinese model even has taken then these countries having opposition towards china we have opposed the shared vision of a common future motto of the 75th anniversary celebration of the un that is that motto might come in the news because in their opposition yes might come not in the news in the examination the motto of the 75th anniversary might come as a statement so, yes you, i hope you understood that situation and why the question might come yes then next one united nations un human rights council and why it was in news america left the un human rights council in 2018 because of some dispute now america want to rejoin and obviously the rejoining will not be so easy first america will be added as a observer observer means the united nations human rights council un human rights council will observe america and after observation whenever they are they have to be added they will be added presently that means america lost its membership they wanted to re-enter in 2020 then when they tried for re entry they were given only the observer status not a full member then now also america is not a full member in the un human rights council international solar alliance it is an organization established by india it is an international organization 122 countries are there this is an organization for those countries having a huge potential of solar energy india has a the countries which are under the tropic of cancer between the between the equator and tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn this tropical region yes in geography you might have studied the tropical region the countries in the tropical region has huge potential of the solar energy production because the sun will be above such as sun will be just above throughout the year then this is an organization of the countries in the or sunshine countries the countries on the tropic of cancer and between the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn there is the tropical region countries 122 countries are the members it is a initiation of india and india's major aim is development of over 1000 gigawatt solar generation capacity and mobilization of investment gurugram in haryana is the is the headquarters of the international solar alliance it is an organization established by india initially india and france were the later india only took over petrapol petrapol is a check post between india and bangladesh and it's a new check post that is for transportation of goods one some check post will be some entry point will be the petrapol is a entry point between india and bangladesh recently inaugurated in 24 parganas district of the west bengal then sometimes it might come in the news so it might come in the examination petrapol then you have to understand that it is a check point a check post or a entry and exit point between india and bangladesh recently inaugurated yes. next one india european union relations after india started the relationship with european union 55 years of diplomatic relations passed and we made the 14th summit between india and un was held in 2018 15th summit was held in 2020 15 summits we will discuss later anyway the in the 14th summit and 15th summit 14th summit we made a motto of counter terrorism that is count how we can combat terrorism together india and european union together how we can fight the terrorism then and india india european union and our major aim is the security of india and the european union countries chabahar zahdan railway line chabahar all of you might be knowing chabahar is a port established funded by government of india and established by government of india and funded by government of india in iran in the persian gulf of iran what is the aim of chabahar port the aim of chabahar port is that 
going through the Arabian Sea and going to Iran. And from Iran, we can go into Afghanistan. From Afghanistan, we can get access to Central Asia. That is, reaching to Central Asia without touching Pakistan. That is the aim of the Chabaha. Yes. That why otherwise we will be surprised why government of India spending that much money constructing a port going into a rich country like Iran. We have a diplomatic deal. We have a strategy for that. Because Central Asia is very rich in uranium. Uranium is the fuel used for atomic energy. Yes. Uranium is the, you must have studied in science and technology class, the uranium based atomic energy reactors. Then uranium, we have to import uranium. The naturally available uranium mining in India is very limited. We have to depend on imported uranium. Central Asia, especially Kazakhstan, is a good source of uranium. All Central Asian countries are good friends of India, but we are unable to import it because we have to cross Pakistan. Pakistan will never allow India to import uranium for atomic energy because they will blame us that we are manufacturing atom bombs that will be the that is why, and that is why Chabahar port is important. We can access Central Asia without touching Pakistan. Now, recently, Iran's port and maritime organization has conveyed India for a request for locomotives and signaling equipment for Chabahar Zahdan railway lane. There is a new railway lane established by the Iran and between Chabahar port to Zahdan city. Then they have requested us to help them with the railway signaling equipment because India has a good railway network and we can provide them the technology and the products of the railway signaling because the signal you might have seen the red and green color signals and locomotives that is the engines, railway engines also. And then India has, uh, Iran has asked India to activate US dollar 150 million credit line which was offered to buy by India for, during the Iranian president visit in 2000. We offer them, we will provide them support of the 150 million US dollar loan. We will give them and we'll give them these instruments as a part of the loan. Yes. The next one, United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Obviously, India has large coastal area. Inside the sea, how far we have the we have the power. Obviously, that should be defined. Otherwise, we are on the coast of Arabian Sea. We cannot claim the power on and the sovereignty on entire Arabian Sea. We cannot claim it. For that, we have an international agreement. Why this was in news? Many times, sometimes Indian fishermen, they are from Tamil Nadu. They are crossing and reaching to the sea, territorial sea of the territorial sea of Sri Lanka, because Sri Lanka and India are neighbors. Then the, especially the marine neighbors. Then by mistake, they are entering Sri Lankan territory, they are being arrested and etc. These issues happen. Then what is the territorial sovereignty of any country and over the sea? And that is defined by, this is in news because of these issues of the dispute between India and Sri Lanka. Many fishermen of India are under in, are imprisoned in Sri Lanka for crossing the limit of our Indian Sea and entering to the territorial sea of Sri Lanka. Yes. United Nations Convention of the Law of Sea also known as law of the sea divides marine areas into five major zones one is internal water internal water means that our our coastal region it is our own thing only territorial sea and second one is territorial sea territorial sea means that extends sea water up to 12 nautical mile 12 nautical mile is the measurement mile only earlier mile and up to 12 nautical miles from India, it is a territorial sea of India. We have the territorial sovereignty. Next one, contiguous zone extends up to 24 nautical miles. We have certain more powers, extra powers on that area. The territorial sea, we have full sovereignty as India. After that, when we go to contiguous zone up to 24 nautical miles, we have not that much power, some powers India has. After that, exclusive economic zone extends up to 200 nautical mile and then after 200 nautical mile is high sea we don't have any power then on on the on the ex exclusive economic zone up to 200 nautical mile india has certain powers not full sovereignty we have some limited powers are there and for example we can we can drill the oil and we can go for fishing and these powers are there and contingency zone we have 
moderate powers are the dual nautical mile territorial sea we have the 100% power now the problem what happens is that indian fishermen will be in the india's econo exclusive economic zone they are in india's exclusive economic zone below 200, 200 nautical mile but by that time they enter the territorial sea of sri lanka territorial sea means that territorial territorial sea means that 12 nautical mile by moving into 200 nautical mile obviously you will reach the not that much also by going into the contiguous zone also sometimes will reach the territorial sea of sri lanka by mistake then they are arrested because territorial sea of sri lanka is a territorial sea of sri lanka is a sovereign part of the sri lanka then this is the we have what we have to understand these are the classifications of the classification of the sea sovereignty under the united nations convention on the law of the sea and india sri lanka fishermen issue i told you that indian fishermen are falling into the territorial sea of sri lanka territorial sea is 12 nautical miles from the coastal areas permanent court of arbitration permanent court of arbitration and government of india obviously we had a 2g case 2g spectrum and 2g case you might be aware of area that is we and cancel lot of letters of consent for providing 2g service in the long back only because from different countries we had taken the letter of consent that we will give you the freedom to launch the 2g network in india then that, those letters india union indian government cancelled later due to some issues these companies for which and for which the 2g licenses were cancelled and they complained they provided a complaint in a complaint and complaint against government of india in international arbitration tribunal in international arbitration tribunal international arbitration tribunal is a court in hague netherlands then it is working under the united nations commission on international trade law there is a united nations commission on international trade law recently this united this international international arbitration tribunal has given a judgment in favor of india that is whatever india done is not a violation of the law that is why this permanent court of arbitration that is the that is the first international it is the first international in the, the most valuable international court of arbitration arbitration we have studied in the alternative dispute resolution mechanism mediation conciliation and arbitration arbitration means that they listen to both the parties and finally give the judgment and whatever judgment given by them we have to accept it basically this was established this was this this is a united nations commission on trade law arbitration rules 1976 has established the permanent court of arbitration and the permanent court of arbitration was established by first international peace conference held in hague in netherlands in 1899 the aim is to solve the dispute between international traders and the countries here the traders of the 2g spectrum and india had a had a had a dispute next one death of elephants in botswana only one thing you have to notice down here in Botswana, there is a delta called as Okavango Delta. You can see in the first line Okavango Delta. In this delta, because of some unknown reason, hundreds of elephants died. Hundreds of elephants died, and the news came. Question will come regarding this delta only. Okavango Delta, which was recently in news, is in which country? Sometimes question might come. And or some statement will come. Okavano Delta, which was recently in news, is a delta in Botswana. Then that way, find out the correct statement. Some geography type questions might come from this international news. Next one. And next one. We encountering America's adversaries through sanction act. Sometimes you might have heard of it. America imposes sanction on Iran. America imposes sanction on sanction on some Iraq, and that means when America imposes a sanction, America is asking all the countries not to do any export and import to that country. On Iran, multiple times America has made sanction, and the sanction on America sanction on Iran by America has become a trouble for India because India is importing the importing the 
crude oil from Iran. That is why it has become a trouble for India in multiple situations. Then this sanction, America's, America has a power to impose sanction on different countries. That power and that power is and that power is given to America and that power is there for America through an American law named as countering America's adversaries through sanctions act. Countering America's adversaries through sanctions act. Then earlier Iran has faced it and North Korea has faced it. Presently Russia is facing it. It was in news why recently they asked India that is and, and America asked India to stop transactions with Russia because America has imposed the America's adversaries through sanction, countering America's adversaries through sanction act on Russia. That is why we should also not do any transaction with Russia. Normally, India does not accept it because we are a sovereign country. We don't want to follow the rules and regulations of any other country. Then sometimes this term CAATSA law, which was in news, and it was in news recently. That means countering America's adversaries through sanction act is the full form. Salami strategy of China, I already explained to you, salami rice strategy because and gradually, gradually from different, different areas of the neighboring, trying this one, that one, some different slice. Salami rice, I show you the, show you the image of the salami rice. Like the salami rice strategy of China means that gradually they are good for Galvan Valley, Hot Springs and Penangspo in the Eastern Ladakh. Then this is called a salami slicing attempt of China. Because last year or two years back, one question came, Belt and Road, Belt and Road Scheme. It is a scheme of which country China is dancing. Then similarly, another international program of China is that is extending their territory by illegally climbing the territories of the neighboring countries is known as salami slicing attempt of China. Then these international political terms sometimes comes in the news. That is a testing whether we have gone to that particular lesson. Yes, US pulled out of WHO, that is a WHO you take care and understand and read thoroughly on WHO, World Health Organization, because US withdrawn from membership of WHO because WHO, WHO has, has criticized US for the COVID-19 cases. Then obviously when US withdraws, WHO will suspend the voting rights of the US and under the Article 7 of the Constitution of the WHO. India Bangladesh Coastal Pact. Obviously, we have made an agreement. Seven agreements are there inside for coastal, coastal sharing, that is, port technology and port sharing and some water sharing, etc. We have made seven agreements with the, with the Bangladesh on India Bangladesh Coastal Pact. And on that, it is there is an agreement that that Chattogram and Mongla ports in Bangladesh can be used by India for movement of goods, especially for the northeastern states of India. Use of we can use the Feni River, Bangladesh Feni River for drink supplying drinking water for the state of Tribura. Bangladesh has agreed for that. Because this port, these ports mentioned in the agreement and the rivers mentioned in the agreement might come as a geography question. That is the point. Mm -hmm. When we have an agreement, more than sometimes question directly from agreement, Feni River might come as a question. It's a river in Bangladesh. And the Chattogram and Mangla ports are in Bangladesh. An exchange of data information to prepare a framework of interim sharing agreements of the six rivers. Manu River, Mahuri River, Kovari, Bomadi River of Tribura, and Dalara River of Bangladesh and the Dulkama River of West Bengal. On these rivers, we will share the information. Right? Interim sharing and agreement for the rivers. That is the river water we will share each other between India and Bangladesh. And next one, an inland water trade route and between the between the Bangladesh Daud, Dauda Kandi and the Sonamura of Tripura, an inland waterway. That is one. So the small boats can move between these two territories to the inland waterway for for the for carrying the goods especially then these are the these seven this was seven agreements are there you can give i have given you all the seven agreements here you can read it and understand basically the question you have to remember these names of these rivers and the ports mentioned
india mauritius relationship there is a term called as comprehensive economic cooperation and partnership agreements what is that mean comprehensive economic cooperation and partnership agreements that is a full fledged economic cooperation not only export and import export import will be the investment will be there all this everything economic activity comprehensive economic cooperation agreements india has recently signed the comprehensive economic cooperation agreement economic cooperation and partnership agreement which we with mauritius the speciality of this agreement is that this is the first agreement india signed with any african country then the first agreement india has signed with any african country then it is almost like a free trade pact any goods of india can move to mauritius any goods of mauritius can move into india and obviously and we will get a good market mauritius market for the indian goods that is the main benefit india has and we can get the products from mauritius coming into india mauritius also they are getting very good market because india has a huge populated country mauritius has lot of lot of consumer items and consumer items that means like the biscuit fresh fruits juice mineral water etc they can get the market yes it is already 430 i am also tired i tried to i wanted to finish the economy also i hope that because of my marathon class you also might be tired and i will come back come again whenever free time is getting i will come back again we'll have the continuation of these classes next is economy we finish the polity and ir of june july august and i will share with you the entire economy notes also and other subjects not also for june july august and you try to do yourself and next you will go for examination whenever time is the and i will come and take the classes for you also then that way by sharing material and whatever possible covering in the class we will go ahead with the current affairs is it okay then i will share with you now itself in all the groups thank you all and please come for all the future current affairs classes bye and we'll meet again in the class